Welcome, Lord's House, as we gather for worship here today. We are so glad that you are here with us here in person and also online as we gather for worship. Uh, this is a very special weekend as we celebrate uh, St. Michael and all angels, as we give thanks to God for uh, the power and the work of angels in our lives. And so we are excited about this weekend and the, the worship that we have here uh, at St. Paul. Just a few announcements as we begin our service. Uh, first of all, a reminder that this is LWML, Lutheran Women Missionary League Weekend. And so we will be receiving a free will offering uh, after the service. There is a mite box back there by the offering plate on that table. And uh, if you are so inclined, we invite you to uh, support the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Also, we are using those yellow cards, uh, continuing to do that here. And so uh, please fill those out uh, with information for us. If you have any changes in address or phone number or those kinds of things, uh, please include that on the yellow card. Also, we want to make the congregation aware that uh, our website is currently going through some technical difficulties. And so you may normally receive the grapevine via email, but we will not be able to email those out here in the, in the near future, so you can always pick one up here. Uh, they are, uh, there's a number of copies out in the narthex, so please pick up your copy of the grapevine. Also, Trunk or Treat is coming up at the end of October. There is a sign-up by the Welcome Center. If you're able to help us out with that Trunk or Treat on October 29th, I believe it is, uh, please, or 30th, 30th, I think, the 30th, please Check out the sign-up sheet, and if you can help us out, we'd greatly appreciate that. Those are our announcements. Again, welcome to the Lord's house. Our bell will call us to worship, and we will begin with the singing of our opening hymn. Hymn 902.
This day in the life of the church is focused on the divinely ordained work of the angels and archangels. Although there are countless angels at work in the service of God, few are known to us by name. The archangel Michael is one of two who are specifically named in both the Old and the New Testaments. Michael's name means who is like God. Michael is given the greatest of assignments in striving on behalf of God's people and commanding the legion of heavenly beings. The Old Testament book of Daniel identifies Michael as the protector of God's people. And the New Testament, the book of Jude, tells of Michael contending with the devil himself. In Revelation, a vision to John shows Michael leading armies of heaven to a great final victory over Satan and the forces of evil and darkness. The angel Gabriel is mentioned in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament and again by Luke in the New Testament. Gabriel's name means strong one of God, which is appropriate. Gabriel brings strong messages from God. The message from Gabriel to Daniel was the assurance that God's anointed one would be coming to his people. And to the Virgin Mary, Gabriel announced the greatest news of all, that she would be the mother of Jesus the Savior, and delivered the news to John, who would prepare his way. The work of angels on earth is as important as their work in heaven, where they surround the throne of God and fill the courts of heaven with praise. Revelation is filled with visions of angels. John writes, Then I looked and heard around the throne and the living creatures and the, vo- and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. In that great heavenly vision, not only do the angels praise the Lord, but all creatures join in the praise as well. We, too, join in the praise as we gather for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Glory be to God on high, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of St. Michael and all angels is from Daniel, chapters 10 and 12. And behold... A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book and, every, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the Revelation of St. John, chapter 12, and it is from this text that the sermon is from. Now war arose in heaven. 
Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Be it woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for our Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they have, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we join in singing hymn number 666, O Little Flock, Fear Not the Foe.
kind of nice to be able to uh, sing hymn number 666 with joy in our hearts as we reflect on the victory of our Lord Christ over the old wicked foe, who indeed still means deadly woe. As Pastor Steve has uh, pointed out, we share today um, in the festival of St. Michael and all angels, a day in which we celebrate and give thanks to God for his unseen, his invisible creation, unseen by human eyes, ministering before the face of God and yet watching over us as we rest at night is, are the angels. And we rejoice and we find new courage in a world that sometimes seems to be growing scarier by the week. Now, annually we remember St. Michael's Day at this time of the year uh, just when darkness has overtaken the hours of daylight. We now have more darkness than daylight. The nights are growing colder, and even though it didn't feel that way this afternoon, summer is losing its grip. It's not yet time to dig out your snow shovels, but just when that is going on, we lose another three minutes of daylight every day. It's only a matter of time when you will need those shovels. And it's just at this time, with these changes going on in the visible world around us, that uh, we turn our attention to the matters of the unseen world which uh, are held before us in the reading from Revelation this evening. Yesterday, I heard a speaker assert that the moral collapse and disappearance of values in our country is a disaster far worse and more serious than any talk about climate change. As Christ's little flock we must pray with the hymnist, Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. There's a war going on, and a sizable number of people, the majority, aren't even aware of it. It's not a material war where there's tanks, jets, rifles, and fighters. It's a spiritual war for our, the soul and heart of our world. It's light versus darkness, to use the words of the Gospel of St. John. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Revelation 12 kind of fills in the big picture behind what's going on in our world today. Michael commands God's army of countless angels, those spiritual beings who are all around us, 
watching over us when we sleep and when we are awake and going about our everyday business. You can't count them, they're so numerous. 10,000 times 10,000s of them, to use John's phrase, myriads and myriads. Indeed, there are many of them. They are God's ministering spirits who keep us from both spiritual as well as physical harm. God sent them to watch over you in all your ways. Luther taught us to pray in his morning and evening prayer, let the evil foe have no power over me. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Yes, there are forces out there powers at war with God and his redeemed people. And it's always been the aim of Satan to kick to pieces the orderly and beautiful world that God has made. In the book of Revelation to St. John, they are called the great dragon, the ancient serpent, who's called the devil and Satan. They're numerous too, and they have great power and influence. And you know, Satan is the master liar, if there ever was one. Whatever he whispers in our ears is a lie. Here's a sample of one of his lies that we hear in our world today. Follow the science. Well, science can help us in some wonderful ways. For instance, by producing life-saving pharmaceuticals. But science cannot tell you the difference between what is right and wrong. And science does not produce values. It cannot tell you what sin is or love or what to believe in. None of that. And yet the devil whispers in our ear, follow the science. Philip Melanchthon, a colleague of Martin Luther on the faculty at Wittenberg University, wrote some verses in, uh, for a hymn to be used on St. Michael's Day. And they go like this. I'll give you a sample of just a couple of verses. The ancient dragon is their foe. His envy and his wrath they know. It always is his aim and pride your Christian people to divide. As of old he deceived the world and into sin and death has hurled, so now he subtly lies in wait to ruin school and church and state. Our students in our Places of education today, high schools and our colleges and universities, are they being taught that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? If God's not in the picture, it's all foolishness. And yet, are people given such spiritual guidance today? Sad to say, in many places, religion in our country has collapsed into nothing more than the latest politics. Given the situation our society finds itself in today, there are times it's hard to be hopeful. 
What's wonderful about our St. Michael's Day lesson is that we're reminded who's won this battle. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come down. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That cosmic battle, unseen in realms that human eyes cannot see, it came to a powerful climax on Good Friday. And at the very end, when Jesus said, it is finished, and it was sealed on that glorious Easter morning when he rose again from death triumphant over death itself. We sang that day, the strife is o'er, the battle won. We heard John say, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but... But, woe to you, O earth and heaven, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Satan is not a good loser. He's really pissed off because he knows his time is short. He doesn't have much time left to do his nasty work. Here on earth, he's been wrecking and destroying as much as possible. Families, marriage, the difference between men and women. But it's not going to do him any good. St. Michael's Day teaches us to live our lives in good spirits. It's too bad that some people come home from church on St. Michael's Day and we know there's a war going on and, and, and the struggle in our own lives with evil is uh, something that can be very close to us. And so, you know, it's hard to smile. You may go into your closet and cry. Before he was executed for his opposition to Hitler, before he was killed by the Nazis, Lutheran pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote in one of his letters from prison, not many days before he died, he said he rejoiced about the people who had something called Hilaritas. Now, you might not be too familiar with that old Latin word, but it's related to the word like if you go to a good comedy, you come home and say, that was hilarious. I laughed until my sides hurt. Yes, that's cheerfulness. Bonhoeffer wrote, these are people who have an optimism about their own work. They have a boldness, a willingness to defy the world and popular opinion in the firm conviction that they are doing the world good through their work, even if the world isn't pleased with it. Hilaritas makes me think of uh, one of those early Christians, St. Paul, in prison. He was really taking it for standing up for Christ and preaching the gospel in his day. He wore chains for that. But what does he say to us? Rejoice! Rejoice in the Lord always! 
Those in the midst of the struggle know how to laugh. And so should we. It's no time to hang your head. The victory is ours. Too bad that Satan doesn't like it. Be cheerful and rejoice in the Lord always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that keep your hearts and your minds firm in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Moldenauer. Our service continues with our prayer of the church. Let us all rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of all creation, we thank you for the ministry of the blessed angels who are called to do your work among us. Help us realize as we deal with people in our daily lives that sometimes we are ent entertaining angels unaware. And help us to seek to be the healers and bringers of joy as your angels are among us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, Lord of all creatures, we pray for the world in which we live. Grant us what is needful in our lives while instilling within us a sense of charity and a willingness to share what we have been given with those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of time and eternity, we ask that the protection of your holy angels be with those whose labor is challenging or dangerous and with those who are bringing the good news of salvation in Jesus to the far corners of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of mercy and care, we pray for those with special needs and concerns this day especially the hospitalized, the grieving, the unemployed, the shut-ins, and all others for whom our petitions are desired. Enable us to encourage, uphold, and strengthen those around us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we bring our petitions, Lord, we remember all who have departed this life and now with angels and archangels are rejoicing in the glory of your promised heavenly kingdom. Direct our ways on earth that we complete this life in faith and at last rejoice together with them in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.